Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 47. If a million people see my movie, I hope they see a million different movies. Quentin Tarantino. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free film audiobook from Audible. And our show is sponsored today by USC Film School's only online course, Directing the Actor, by the legendary Nina Foch. You can download that at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash USC. Today, guys, we have a special treat. We have a really old good friend of mine, Yancey Arias. Um, He is an actor who's been in a million different movies. I mean, I can't even explain to you how many movies he's been in. He's been on so many shows. He's been on over 70. He officially has 70 acting credits on film, television, and Broadway, over uh, 70 acting credits, uh, on shows like Castle, NCIS New Orleans, The Sopranos, Bones, Hawaii Five-0, Elementary, CSI New York, NCSI, NCIS Los Angeles, Burn Notice, The Shield, and has been on big, huge tentpole movies like Live Free or Die Hard, Time Machine, and the upcoming new film coming out with Robert De Niro called Hands of Stone. He is a working actor. That's what I like to call Yancey. Yancey is definitely a working actor. He's been in the business for years and years and years. He, You really won't find a nicer, a nicer not only a nicer actor, but nicer human being. Uh, I've worked on with Yancey in a few projects in the past, and he's been nothing but a pleasure to work with. And he, you know, he teaches acting uh, as well. And I, you know, I, I wanted him on the show to kind of, you know, let people know what it takes not only to be a working actor, but to be a working professional in the industry. And a lot of the stuff that he talks about in regards to acting can easily be translated into directing, writing, or any other um, discipline within the filmmaking business. Now, if acting wasn't enough, Yancey is also a very good director and producer working with his production company, NYC Films. He's producing multiple different projects uh, as a director and a producer and worked on a wonderful little film called The Shooting Star Salesman with one of our former guests as a director, Kiko Velarde. Now, Yancey is a very hard man to to get a hold of. He is working constantly. Uh, I actually got him uh, to do this interview in between takes on the set of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which he's going to be uh, either has already aired or will be airing soon. So uh, he's going to be in between. So you'll hear some things in the background. you hear some doors closing and opening. He's just basically waiting around between scenes, and he was gracious enough to uh, to do this interview for us. So enjoy my interview with Yancey Arias. Yancey, man, thanks so much for being on the show, man. I know you're extremely busy, so thanks again, man. You're welcome, man. Please, anytime. So um, we'll get right to it. What was your first experience uh, in the entertainment business? My grandma and my mom, they were hosting a competition for the Menudos uh, for the best uh, lip syncing group that there could possibly be in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Now, 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 Menudo is the one direction of our time. The One Direction of Our Time, correct. But the Puerto Rican kids, you know, they knew those. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I I basically was the intermission entertainment, and I actually was singing for real. I wasn't lip singing. I was just kind of like, they threw me on stage to, as a filler. And everybody sat down when they heard my voice, and, you know, it was a really nice experience because it was a beautiful song um, that, that was uh, – from the Menudos, but it was something that that was touching to them because one of the guys was leaving the group and I sang his song, mm-hmm. No Me Olvides, is it Don't Forget Me. Mm-hmm. So all the girls went nuts and they started crying and, you know, and it was just like uh, an amazing experience of, of, of contacting an audience and giving them something they wanted to hear and also having a voice and being accepted. And I was just like, wow, OK, this might be something I like to do. And from there on, uh, my mom supported me, you know, in everything I wanted to do in terms of my entertainment, um, you know, experience. Now, what 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 made you want to be an actor? Like, there's a difference between jumping on stage on and singing and becoming an actor. Acting, correct. So basically, when I went to high school, about two years after the fact, I was 14. I was 12 when that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I got on stage for the first time, and I was 14 when I went to a high school by the name of St. John's Prep in Astoria, Queens. 
and I met the wonderful James R. Green, who uh, coincidentally, you know, saw me on, uh, on the uh, on the train, on the seven train, or actually the N and R train, headed back into the city uh, with my with my guys that I hung out with from the baseball team, and we were all clowning around singing. You know these these funny songs, a lot of like doo wop and you know fifties greats and mm-hmm. and uh, we were singing always and forever. I'll never forget oh, yeah? always and forever. And uh, uh, he was like, I want all you guys to audition for the school play. So you know, I was the only one who was interested, and I auditioned, and he he gave me the lead role. Uh, I was the only one who could really sing that year, right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he he made a deal with me. He says, I'm going to teach you how to sing. And you're going to teach me how to speak Spanish because he was an opera singer. Uh So he wanted to sing with a better accent, his arias. And uh, coincidentally, my name is Yancey Aria. So, you know, (laughs) what a a great duo. So he then uh, introduced me to Jack Romano, uh, who uh, was the main director of the stage of the place called uh, Stage Door Manor up in Lock Sheldrick, New York, where I studied uh, acting and singing and dancing and everything as a little kid from age 14 to 17. Uh, so I, I got a nice scholarship, you know, every summer doing, you know, plays. And during the winter season, I was doing plays with Mr. Green. And then at another high school that I had to end up going because I moved to Staten Island at more, more Catholic. So throughout the high school years, I, I did about maybe 12 plays, <laughs> right. you know, and, and mostly musical and mm-hmm. some 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 straight plays, but you know, um, I, I soaked it all up, man. That's when I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it was literally at the age of fifteen where I where I confirmed it. Like fourteen, I I wet my feet. Fifteen, <laughs> I was like, no, nope, this is it. This is me. This is who I am. This is this is my calling. So that's awesome, uh, man. Yeah. And then I went on to college to Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, I was accepted there. And uh, I studied there for another two years between age 19 and 20. And, and then at 22, I got Miss Saigon on Broadway. And, you know, I continued really? my education. Yeah, yeah. I got, that must I, have been, wow. That, that was a dream come true because when I was in high school, I saw Les Miserables in the front row center seat. Uh-huh. And I was bawling. It was just an amazing experience. Oh, I can imagine. I, I literally said, I'm going to be on this stage someday. I will perform on this stage someday. And it, kid you not, that's exactly what happened. About five years later, I book I book Miss Saigon, and I'm in that that theater in the same very the very same theater. And can you you can imagine when I was rehearsing for Miss Saigon, uh-huh. and I knew, and I was looking at the play from the audience perspective, because uh, that's what you do before you you know actually when you when you jump on a show mm-hmm. that's already established, you have to watch the show several times mm-hmm. so that you see how it all works before you're actually on there. And I, I, I was in tears then, you know, just like, <laughs> wow, I, I, I made a, I made a very strong commitment and, and, a, and a conviction that I would be at this theater, this very theater working on this very stage. And here I am. And it was, it was a wonderful training ground. It was a wonderful experience. I did it for six years. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, during that time I continued my studies with my coach, Alan Savage out of New York. And I was there every week doing scenes outside of what I was doing with the show. And he was helping me hone in my skills and, and just, you know, grow up in it, you know, and, and, and really just find a, a sense of like, a sense of like survival and ownership, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. at the same time, just like really understanding the journey, you know, that this is and where, where I really want to take my career and where, where I take my mission in, in my work. And so he was detriment. It was just, he was pivotal and he was super important, you know, in, in summing it all up for me. Right. Um, and then uh, I was doing a lot of, you know, guest stars, you know, in, in all the, uh, all the uh, New York cop shows like the Lower and orders and the mm-hmm. uh, New York undercover and NYPD blue, all those shows that would shoot in New York. Um, NYPD was shot in LA, but they sometimes came to New York mm-hmm. and, um, so Iron- shoot, ironically, ironically, so yeah. <laughs> so I shot, you know, anything that was in New York, I was shooting, and then I realized that there were some really interesting roles that I never got a chance to be seen for. Um, you know, once I actually signed on with Paradigm back in 1995, you know, I, I realized that there were some roles that 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 I was missing out on, and I had to be in Los Angeles. So that was in 2001. Mm-hmm. 
um, where I decided to move to uh, Los Angeles and and try to uh, compete for for some of the more you know more interesting uh, involved roles that that you know would be casted um, out of LA. Um, mm-hmm. So that that was then my mission, and um, I came out in one and. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And I've been here in Los Angeles for close to uh, 15 years. So, so what's the big difference between working in New York and working in LA as an actor? Okay, well, New York, you know, you're, you obviously have more tangibility to theater. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you could do... Uh, you can shoot on on any set in New York, you know, uh, between six a.m. and six p.m., and then jump on the th- on the stage at night, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, knock out a great, you know, as best as possible, do your best work possible at night from seven thirty to eleven, you know, and that was my life back then. I was that's exactly what I was doing. So I was I was it was such a wonderful experience to go from set to stage, mm-hmm. you know, almost every day. And I did it quite often, and um, it was amazing. It was just it, 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 exhilarating, and and definitely for a young person, it's like you're on top of the world. You feel like such a rock star, <laughs> right, know? right, right. But but you know, and you definitely you know have all the energy for that. Um, you know, uh, in L.A. in in L.A., you know, it, it's more like you know, basically, if you don't have the right. I guess outlets you could be sitting around (laughs) because (laughs) because you know um sometimes I I me personally you know uh I would work probably I don't know maybe four or five times in the year so those projects would take me about you know three weeks to shoot each one you know and uh Unless I'm on a series and I'm a series regular and it takes me throughout the whole year or at least, say, you know, six or seven months, you know, it would be like five to six months, you know, that I'm working and another five to six months in between that I'm not. So what do you do with your time? You know, so mm-hmm. I found golf. <laughs> I, I found, you know, uh, an adult baseball league that I was playing on. You know, I found I found poker, <laughs> you know, but I play the cheap poker i don't play the expensive poker right right <laughs> you know you're not rolling that you're not rolling that hard <laughs> i know I, I, I know my limits and now i have a kid right so, so my kid my, my baby boy is taking a lot of my time so yeah a lot of this the outlets that i was using is now you know focused on him <laughs> isn't it isn't it amazing yeah. that happens when when kids come around isn't it oh i love it and you know it's great because now now i'm in more of like the the seat of you know enjoying him you know, watch him grow and wa- mm-hmm. and watching him, you know, accept whatever whatever things that I throw at him. Like if I throw a golf ball, ball at him or a baseball bat and a ball, just to see him pick it up and, and do something with it and mm-hmm. try to guide him through that. That's that's just like it's amazing. That, that's you know, it's just an amazing experience. You know, even if I had a girl, I would do the same thing with her. You know, right, but right. Like, your kids, period. You know, it's just like to see their light bulbs go off and then learn every day and to mm-hmm. see what they pick up in the, about 24 to 48 hours, a new oh, word or, oh. or a new thing that they do or a new behavior. That's like, that's like the most amazing production I've ever done in my life. So, right. so that's, that's definitely, you know, my involvement, you know, between work now for the last year and a half, um, just, just basically being with him and taking him to places to see how, you know, see how he reacts to stuff. And, so he's a big guinea pig for you is what you're saying. He's a big, big kidney pig, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's so much fun because I've, I've, had, I've had a wonderful life so far, and I and I hope to have another forty years in me, you know, with God willing, at least 40, 50 years, you know. But uh-huh. but with all that said, you know, like in this time of my life at forty four, you know, um, I have so much to give to to my kids, and and I say kids because we want another one, you know, right, right, um, right, right. So so you know, and I have to give, I have to give you. Kids. I have to give you props, man. You are actually one of the few actors who actually admit their age publicly. Oh, I don't care, <laughs> I don't care about that. I know you, you know don't. I know it's you like, don't. It's, after a while, you don't. You stop caring because when you do some high-profile shows like Kingpin or you mm-hmm. know something like that or Thief, when I, the, mm-hmm. the series that I did, you know, 
some sometimes you end up doing press and the press gets the information and then it's all over the place. There's no hiding it. You know? Not anymore. <laughs> it, the, no, it's no, not the twenties no. or the thirties anymore. There's no, no hiding no. anything. I mean, anymore. my look, my look, the way I look and the way I carry myself. I, I eat right and I work out hard, so I, I still look about thirty five. I can play anywhere between 35, 36 to about 45, my age, you, uh-huh. know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so the age range is there. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I keep myself healthy enough throughout my life to, to, to be able to warrant that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean the, the age thing, yeah, there's, there's certain, sometimes you would, there's, there's a, a sense of ageism in, in the business and there's mm-hmm. isms everywhere, man. But you know, you, right. you limit yourself. I, Exactly. I just, I just, you know, do what I do and I love. And I also produce and I direct and I write. And these are things that I do, you know, also along with, you know, being a dad. Well, that are also great outlets. And for me to, you know, to stay involved and to stay creative, you know, during, sure, during sure, sure. Any, any spells that there could be, you know, if there's a dry spell in the business at all. You know, then I, I'm still creative. You know. So let me ask you now. I'm going to get into some acting questions because I, I, you know, I'm a director. We've worked together on on, on multiple projects together uh, in the over the years. Um, uh, I've never directed you though. I do hope one no. day too to direct you. Yeah, we great. Uh, um, but uh, so I'm going to ask you some acting questions. Uh, so this is a little bit selfish because I want to know, but okay. also for the audience as well. Um, what makes a good actor, in your opinion? A good actor is one that takes on the responsibility of the human being that they're representing. Great definition. That, that takes on the, rep, the, the responsibility of the story being told. Uh, you know, every story uh, has some truth in it, if not all true. Mm-hmm. Okay? Even if, the, even if it's made based on, uh, on nothing and it's a fictitious story, someone was inspired enough to write it that something in their life has changed or there's something that they had to deal with that was really specific, but they don't want to, they don't want everybody to know about it. It's in there. And you got to find those gems of information in every project that you do to understand that whether it be, you know, sci-fi or uh, based on a true story biopic that, that, you know, um, there's a very specific reason and a very specific audience that, that we're trying to reach out to, and to tell a story that is somehow motivates someone. Mm-hmm. So when you when do we become a responsible actor, then then the actor is now is now committed to communication, communicating that story, and committed to you know being a part of a team to bring that that whole story to light. Um, whereas like if an actor is not that committed, then it really becomes about them and about all their fears and about all you know. Ego uh, and things like that. Ego sure. and whatever else that, that has nothing to do with the story. So that to me defines, you know, um, what what a really good actor is. Now, I, I you know, directing actors over the years, um, one thing I always see sometimes is a lot of times actors get in their own way uh, when it comes to playing a character. What, what would you suggest as, uh, you know, in – uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, but how do you, what would you suggest and how to get actors to get out of their own way? And I'm not sure if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Well, yes, absolutely. Well, see, here's the thing, you know, with proper training, with <laughs> the proper coaches, you know, actors find a safe space where they can create and they can be like little lab rats or be like little scientists and just explore and, 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 you know, Work with all the different colors in the in the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Work with all the different colors on, on the palette, and just you know, completely immerse themselves in the training process, so that they can learn to fuck up. They mm-hmm. can learn to they can learn to you know be bad actors, to be great actors, to to, to just to just you know not think so much, mm-hmm. but just to create in the creative mode. You know, because there is no right or wrong. Right. There is, there is, you know, a commitment to the work and to try to explore. So, actors without proper training do get in their own way because they're too worried. They don't have, they don't, they don't know, they don't, you know, they haven't explored. They haven't right. gone. They have, you know, it's like it's like you know saying, okay, uh, listen, young man, I'm, uh, you're going to go from from Los Angeles and you're going to walk all the way to Europe. You're going to walk all the way to a town called Yorkshire, mm-hmm. England. Okay, you're going to walk all the way there. Um, Here's a map. Good luck. 
But if, you know, if, if, you know, if you, if you take that person, you say, okay, I'm going to train you how to use, you know, this tool Mm -hmm. that helps you get through that mountain. And I'm going to train you how to, you know, um, use this float to get to, through the ocean Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. use this scuba gear and, you know, and Mm -hmm. you gear them up. Mm-hmm. So you got when you when you go when you go into any kind of ex, you know a a, 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 um, a studio that's worth you know uh, going to they're gonna they're gonna suit you up they're gonna they're gonna tool you up they're gonna give you a utility belt. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show that you can uh, easily access after many years of training. Uh, easily access these tools to understand what you need. So, say if you're a chef in the in 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 a uh, in a kitchen in a world renowned kitchen, you got all the spices, you got all the mm-hmm. you know you got all the materials laid out, and that took years of understanding how all those spices work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So 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 a good a good actor who has a lot of training, you know, uh, a good training, not just any training, but mm-hmm. good training, uh, like in a good conservatory, um, has explored. A lot of those ingredients and all of those tools to use in order for them to be able to come to a set or come to a stage, and 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 live. So what happens? Is, you know, it's a it's a process in order to to have that kind of freedom, to have that kind of creative freedom, to understand when they might be getting themselves into any kind of trouble, like getting in, getting to in their own way, mm-hmm. or or when they're actually in the creative flow of it. And so, you know, a good, a good trained actor knows when, when they're in and when they're out. And so, you know, and they know how to get back in if they're out. Okay? Right. So, um, and that's why a good director, you know, uh, basically will, will try to hire the best possible actors. So they don't, they, they, that part of the job is easy. They can, they can trust that their actors are going to, you know, show up to work and know exactly, you know, what what story they're telling, mm-hmm. and 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 you know, uh, the director can also then freely create on, on on many levels. You know, he doesn't have to babysit an actor. He can now, you know, think about the shot and think about the lighting and think right. about you know the costumes and the colors and the all the nuances and a special effect that he might have. You know, so so it's really you know it's in, it's entrusting being able to entrust an actor. Who, who is primed to come to set to work that way. Um, so, so that's, that's uh, the key element is good training to help mm-hmm. understand how and when to, it, when a person feels like, you know, an actor feels like they might be getting in their own way and how do they bring themselves back to the story? So it's kind of like, uh, you know, for another analogy, it's like kind of going into a boxing ring, you know, you're not going to go up against uh, Floyd Mayweather without, any training, <laughs> correct, or, or fights, or, <laughs> or or any fights in general. Like I'm like yeah. I'm just gonna walk in. I'm like I, I've seen someone throw a punch. I'm right. gonna try throwing a punch. Exactly. Uh, and that's where I think a lot of actors do get it in trouble because they they look at like oh I see what that guy's doing. Oh I can go do that. Right. Uh, and you might get one lucky punch. Maybe if you're lucky. Right. But you're lucky. Right. But, but again, you got You got to follow through because you, you right. Know, then it's, it's like you may win that punch, but you're not going to win the fight. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, that, and that's what happens with a lot of young actors who come to Hollywood is that, you know, they come from wherever they come from. If they don't have training and they don't have support, a support system, they get lost in it because, you mm-hmm. know, they, they feel like, oh, I look good, you know, and I, I, I could do that. I could be like, you know, De Niro or Brad Pitt or whoever. Mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. And they show up without, you know, proper training and proper, proper skill or, or, or support and, and, and they get buried. They get buried. Oh, because, destroyed, you know, destroyed. You know, yeah, because they don't, they don't, they don't understand. You know, sometimes there's some people that you know that the studios will hire to, you know, because they're so beautiful, you know, and then they'll hire coaches for them on set. And and um, you know, if they're lucky, they take to heart the experience they have with the coach, and they cling on to the coach, and the coach guides them through their career for the rest of their life. Or if they're too you know, um, I guess self-absorbed and, you know, uh, uh, prideful that they think that they don't need a coach. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's only going to last them for so long, you know? Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So you need to be kind of humble in this, in this business. And at the same time, you have to be strong willed and know that, you know, if you want a career in this industry, you, you never stop learning ever. Right. And like, I, I always look at, um, probably one of the greatest living actors alive now is Meryl Streep and you watch her. And she just, 
uh, it just embodies whatever she does. It's yeah. it's magical to watch, actually. And like she just changes from character to character with a fearlessness that. Um, and I think that's a big word to use when you're when you're an actor to be fearless, and it's difficult to get to that point. Uh, well, I think I think that, that there's a you know the dichotomy of that is mm-hmm. is that you know uh, you got to be willing to be fearful right. to know not to have fear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so that's fun. Like like when you go when you go to battle, you know, when you're at the top of the mountain and you're looking down at your enemy. You know, you, you know, there's something that happens in the gut of your stomach is like, this may not turn out that right, right. <laughs> but you're willing to, you're courageous enough to try, you know? Mm-hmm. And so you go and you go into battle. So, so you can't negate fear. This no, fear is there, right? but you, you embrace that fear and, and you courageously go into the fight. And, and, uh, and that's what is, you know, that, that's the, the amazing part of it is like some people get consumed by fear. You know, but they don't. They don't realize that 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 very energy is good energy, and you can make that productive for yourself. Absolutely, fear can be a driving force if used properly. Correct. Now, um, can you give any advice to actors about the brutal auditioning process? Which I've been on the. Uh, I've never been in front to audition for someone. I've always been auditioning people, and I try to be as nice as I possibly can to actors that come in. But I've seen other casting casting sessions that are absolutely just brutal what right. what do you and i'm sure you've i'm sure you have a couple stories uh what can, what kind of advice can you give actors about handling that that kind of brutal auditioning process well it, this is a this is a 20 pound question i mean it's a, it's <laughs> it's a big one but i'll try to break it down as quickly as i can i mean sure. basically you know when you when you're handed the material from your agent or wherever you get it from you know you 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 commit to it 100 percent, and you you learn it um, and you research it as best as you can so that, so that when you go in, you have creative freedom so that you're not tied to the page in your hand, you know, so that you can, you know, uh, do your best with that and, and, and give an interpretation of, of, of the story that, that it is, you know, uh, on the page already. Uh, then, you know, on game day, when, you, before you go in, before you go in, you know, you want to. Uh, feel like you've put in the hours, you've put, you've, you've put in the time, you, you've done your best to prepare. Now just go in and celebrate. Go and celebrate like you're actually shooting. You have to have mm-hmm. a sense of like uh, ownership and, and acknowledgement of the fact that, you know, life is a rehearsal. You don't have to get it right. Enjoy the process. So you go, you go into the, the room where you're waiting for, and yes, there's 20 other people, but you know what? God bless them. They're going to get theirs someday. You're going to get yours someday. It's not up to you, you know. It's really not up to you. All you can do, the only thing that we have power over, is celebrating our preparation. Mm-hmm. Game day is celebrating our practice. You know, when the That's guys cool. go, when the guys go to the Super Bowl, you know, they've been working hard all season and they continue to still practice, you know, their weaknesses. And then when it's game day, when when they say, "Okay, it's time to play," and the whistle goes. It's a celebration, man. And then everything else just comes off you, man. It just everything comes through naturally without you even thinking about it. And then understanding that you, you, you there's nothing else you could do but that because the director and the producer and the writer, they're in the room and they're looking for what they wrote. So if you don't happen to be exactly what they're looking for, it's nothing against you. They love your work. And someday they might actually hire you on another project. And case in point, that's happened to me several times. You know, I wasn't ripe for a certain part, but they, they love my work. I went in there with that attitude that I talk about and, and they love it. And, and they hired me later on. Nice. Yeah. It's it, it, like, I always try to tell actors, like sometimes it's just not personal. Sometimes they're not looking for a, a five ten Latino. Sometimes right. they're looking for a six foot five black guy. That's right. And it just, that didn't get to you. And unfortunately right. before the auditioning right. process, but, but don't let that shut you down. Just exactly. Like rock and roll because you never know. They might even write you in. They might love you I've, so much. They write you into the project. Right. And that's happened. I've seen that happen many times with actor friends of mine as well. You just got to do. I was interviewing Robert Forrester uh, a while ago, and he was just always saying the same thing. Kind of like, do the best work you can, no matter how small the part is, no matter how small the audition is. Just bring your game. That's right. Every time. And and only good things can happen from that. might not happen every time, but eventually something happens from that. Amen. Um, now, what kind of advice can you uh, give uh, about handling rejection? Because I know that's a huge part of being an actor. 
Okay. Could this be our last question, or can we continue this another time? Oh, do you need? Yeah. Do you need a? Do you need to head out? I do need to head out, but but um, but uh, I can answer this question, and then maybe yeah, we'll and up another time. absolutely perfect. Okay. So so um, rejection. You know, you have to have like skin of steel. You know, basically. And again, if you go back to understanding, you know how how and why we go into to, you know to these uh, to the audition process, then it doesn't matter the rejection because it, you know it has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. If you did your best, that and you claim and you put your stake, you you put your stamp. This is my brand. This is how I work. This is who I am. This is what I love to do. This is how I prepare. You know, and, and it all comes out in the story when you when you tell that story when you're dealing with the other actor or you know, the, the, the the casting person, and you have this great, wonderful, general, genuine rapport with the other person, and you're really in the scene, and you really give yourself over to the scene and to the other person, and invest yourself in that way, then you did your job. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now, back to the show. There's, there's nothing else you can do. You, if you did your job, you did your job, you walk away. And and now next time that you know, I, well, I'll do the same thing again. You know, um, one of my friends, uh, Jacob Vargas, is so sweet. You know, I've, I've worked with him several occasions, and uh, King Ping Chavez, etc. And and my boy said it right. You know, he says we're career auditioners. That's our career. Mm-hmm. You know, we go in every time, like we're on set, we're working, we're getting paid for it. And every so, I mean, I've so I went in on a thousand jobs, maybe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 30 years of experience of this, of this entertainment industry. And I, in my mind, I did a thousand projects on IMDB. I did 70 projects, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right, but, right. I, you know, but that's how you psych yourself out for this whole thing. You just say, you know, you psych yourself up for it because you just say, listen, this is my career. This is what I do. I meet people all the time. That's what I do. And every time I meet them, I give them my best, best possible you know, scenario, my bet, my best foot forward, you know, where, what would you consider to be your big break? Big breaks for big breaks, I guess would be, uh, Kingpin because that was the biggest audience that, you know, I was able to, you know, share a story with, uh, 25 million viewers showed up wow. to watch the, the first episode and we beat, uh, Dragnet and, and Sopranos that Sunday. Nice. I remember it vividly, and <laughs> uh, and uh, then the, the the scheduling of the show got kind of wacky. So uh, the numbers kind of you know uh, did a little bit of a jump, but but we maintained about 15 million viewers by the end of the sixth episode, and uh, until this day, 10 years later, or rather 12 years later, everyone is like, "Hey, what happened to that show? Why can't we see it again?" Uh, yeah, I know. You said yeah, that, is so, that what you get? Is that what you get mostly recognized for? You know, yeah. I mean, I would say, yeah, ninety percent of the time when people see me, they go kingpin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but then you know, then I have a nice group of people that actually watch a lot of different things that I've been, in and then you know, they catch me on or whatnot. And mm-hmm. but I got to say, that would be the 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 show that broke me in. Um, and you know, Alan Coulter and David Mills, God bless his soul, rest in peace. Uh, they they were so great to give me that opportunity and to uh, and to rest that responsibility onto me. Now, as an actor, what kind of what kind of experience is that? Because that's a very unique experience for an actor, uh, you know, being kind of thrown into the spotlight like that. I mean, it's not like you're an overnight success. You had been working for years before you got that shot. Right. But right. but I'm imagining as an actor that what was the experience like being thrown in front of 25 million it, people? Like, how does that work for you? It was fantastic because you said a key thing. I've been in the business a long time time prior to that i've I've already working you know on film and television for about 12 years prior to that experience and in all the experiences i've had in different shows that i've worked on in like guest starring or recurring roles you know um i had the opportunity to work with a lot of people that were you know the leads in shows and and the series regulars and and you know I, i got a sense of like how i wanted to what i wanted to bring to the table for production uh, in terms of like the family atmosphere, the synergy, the the synchronicity, the the flow of happiness, and just you know, I feel like when you're on a series, and if you're a series regular, it starts from the top. So you know, spread the love and 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 bring everybody together and make them feel like they're part of something special. So you know, I I made it very clear to everyone. Number one, number one on the call sheet is not my name. It's the production. It's the show. The mm. show is number one, and we're all here to serve the piece. 
and I gave, you know, I gave everybody the best, you know, support that I possibly could to help them and help me bring the best, you know, uh, product out there for the audience, you know, the best performances and the best, you know, the best love. You see that kind of camaraderie and that kind of family atmosphere that you get to play with um, from day to day, it does show up on the screen. The result mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. greatness. And, you know, um, that was a wonderful experience for, for me to, to, to have to have that responsibility and, and give people that kind of support and, and, and love that, you know, I've always wanted to do when I got my, when I, you know, eventually someone gave me that responsibility. It's about sharing. It's about, you know, bringing everyone together in like a one big happy party, you know, awesome and family. So, so yeah, that was fantastic. Um, so, um, Nancy, real quick, you're, you're wearing your earbuds, right? Yes. Uh, they're, it's rubbing up against your shirt. So if you could just hold the oh. mic part, that would be okay. awesome. But other than that, that was perfect. Um, okay. So, Yancy, you've done a ton of TV work over the years. Uh, sure. Now, how does that differ from your filmmaking experience? Well, um, you know, it's because television was the, uh, I guess, the avenue that I ended up uh, uh, being on quite frequently, especially after a show like Kingpin and whatnot, you know, um, uh, it, it, it's been a challenge to – uh, get into the the uh, the film world because you know it's like it, you have to be careful not to become too popular uh, <laughs> on a TV show you know uh, but but I I've, I'm lucky that I didn't get uh, you know too overused or overexposed in any particular production on television so I've I've been blessed in the way that I've played a lot of different characters you know mm-hmm. and uh, and so when a, a film producer sees me as an actor, you know, they're like, Oh, that guy's interesting. He's always doing something different. Yeah. And I, I know, I know that face, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. If he's a good actor. Okay. Maybe he's right for this role. And if I am great, I'm on the film. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been working hard to get myself more into film, uh, at, uh as of late and, uh, for quite a long time, rather as since I moved here in Los Angeles 15 years ago, <laughs> but uh, every so often I pop up in some films and some big blockbusters, a lot of independence, you know, and in the independent world, I realized that, you know, in order for me to basically, um, you know, kind of bring myself to the attention of, of the film world, I have to kind of create my own project. So I started producing, writing right. and directing, and uh, I'm on my sixth project uh, right now, it's coming out uh, in theaters uh, early the next year, uh, around March, uh, called Restored Me, mm-hmm. um, which is something that I produced on and I acted in. Nice. Um, and, uh, and then I have uh, about three other films in development that uh, we hope to shoot at least uh, one or two. So I hope to shoot in 2016 two new films for uh, the public. Um, and a lot of my stuff is based on true stories, mm-hmm. you know, uh, suspense thrillers or maybe even action uh, just because like, you know, that's kind of the world that I love so much. And, and if you're going to, you know, commit time outside of your acting career, you know, you better do something that you really love and you, you know, you can put a lot of focus and attention to so that, so that it, it you know, it drives, your mission forward, you know, whatever it is that you want to say in the world, you know, and what it is you want to help with, you know, in the world, you know. Now, you've also worked, like you said, you worked on huge uh, tent poles uh, and, and you've worked on small uh, TV shows. Right. What can you tell uh, the actors listening? Uh, what is it like uh, working in a big, like a big blockbuster, like kind of like the day to day vibe? And also any any advice you can give to any actor who might get on as a day player or, you know, on a big show like that? Because it's a very diff- different experience than being on an indie project or on a television show. You know, um, it, it, it's it, you know, indie and television. Okay, mm-hmm. specifically, mm-hmm. Um, it, it's n- not very much different. It's pretty much let, let's you know, let's move. You know, you have to shoot <laughs> right. a lot of pages in one day um, because for a television series, you have you know a week and a half to shoot what's supposed to be a whole episode that could you know forty five minutes of you know of footage and and you know. Uh, indie, you have to shoot, you know, in 18 days. You, if you're lucky if you get 25 days on an indie film, uh, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, so, you know, 18 days is not a far stretch from, you know, 12 days, you know? Right. So, so, um, you do have to hustle and you have to be in shape and, you know, you know, good 
and form that you're, you know, you're, you're eating right, you're getting your rest as much as possible, you're working hard, you know, you're doing some exercise, you got to stay healthy because, you know, there's no time to dilly dally, you know what I mean? So, so you really have to, you know, understand the piece you're, you're in, give, give it your 100%, mm-hmm. you know, emotionally, physically, you know, spiritually, mentally, the whole nine yards. So you got to be ready for all that, you know, so it moves, it moves really, you know, it, it's an animal that is it's definitely a, a uh, uh, a little bit different from the from the studio temples because those films, you know, there's a lot more money involved, there's a lot more time involved, and they and there's a lot more intricacies involved, especially today with the you know visual effects. And we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. All the wonderful, you know, you know, toys and gadgets that are involved in some of the big films that you get to play with, and all the green screen, this and that. There's a lot more waiting around and prep for those kinds of films because there's millions upon millions upon millions of dollars involved, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so, and rightfully so, they want it. To, they want it to be an amazing cinematic experience. Whereas in television and indie films, it's so much more story, story, story. And you know, if we get something spectacular visually, amen. But, you know, we got to get this movie in the can or get right. this TV show, you know, uh, 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 sent off to, you know, to post so that it can make it on time for airtime. Got you it. Know? Yeah. So, so, you know, the, so in terms of like, you know, the difference really is more, you know, against the, you know, big blockbuster films, you know, versus the TV shows and the independent films, you know, mm-hmm. M- mind you, you know, um, if you have a week or two weeks to prep for a TV show or an indie film, you know, you do everything that you can to get, you know, look under every rock creatively, you know, as to understanding what the piece is, what you're fighting for, what you're trying to, what you're trying to achieve in the whole, you know, story and your relationships with everyone and understanding, you know, how, you know, the significance and the, the free fall that you're going into, uh, working in that speed and giving your absolute best, um, for the story. Uh, you know, whereas when you do a, a big blockbuster, you have about a month or two months, maybe even six months prior to shooting. In one case, I had a whole year before shooting on on a blockbuster. You know, which one uh, was that? Time was that Time Machine? Where? Was that Time Machine? Um, no. At, well, you know what? That was a six month waiting period before I got on Time Machine, and right. then uh, uh, Live Free or Die Hard was about mm-hmm. a two month waiting experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is an indie film, but not really. This, this is called uh, Hands of Stone, which which I was uh, part of, uh, and it's coming out next year uh, through the Weinstein Group uh, mm-hmm. uh, with Robert De Niro and Edgar Ramirez. And that particular film, I um, I got the part almost a year before I, I, I did the role. So, you know, and the role, um, as you will see, is a pivotal one in terms of, like, who fights uh, Roberto Duran in New York City for the first time ever. You know, in the history of Robert Duran, Roberto Duran, mm-hmm. uh, I, I coincidentally had a whole almost seven, eight, maybe almost a year, uh, like seven, eight months to a year before I was on set, and it gave me plenty of time to work out. You know, boxing wise, and I just, I just boxed my butt off for you know every <laughs> week, like two or three, two or three weeks. Excited to, um, you know, to join the cast. And the biggest compliment I got was when I, when I finished a couple of the fight scenes, I, I came off. The, the 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 ring came out of the ring and mm-hmm. Robert De Niro comes up to me and he's like, hey, what what uh, you know uh, are you pro? I mean, do, you know what what gym what gym you work out of? <laughs> I was like, oh shit, yes, thank you, Lord God, thank you, Mister De Niro, for <laughs> that great compliment, Mister Raging Bull. Right, you know? <laughs> right. Because fuck, you know, like as an actor, you want to be able to disappear in your role. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and and for him not to know that I was an actor on the set. That I was actually, he thought, because I was actually an actual real fighter. Right. That was a huge fucking compliment. That's a know? huge compliment. You know? So, so you know, that that was a testament to my hard work for the 70 months to the year before I got on that set. Yeah. And now you're also talking about directing and producing. You uh, produced uh, a film with um, uh, one of our guests, uh, prior guests, uh, Kiko. Kiko, yes. Yeah, it's the shooting star yeah. salesman. You yep, were yep, the star yep. of that one, and yep, uh, we yep. talk a bunch about that uh, that in the in the episode. But that must have been fun. You did a great job in that short. I remember oh, watching man. it in the beginning, before yeah. uh, before it got released. I was like, man, it was it must have been fun. Oh, it was fantastic. And you know, I, I'm trained, you know, uh, classically, and I you know I went to conservatory, Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, and 
you know, so, so when I read the script, I felt like it was such an eloquent piece and I felt like it was something that you never seen me do before, you know? And so I really wanted to challenge that, you know, myself and the piece to, to see a Latino in that role. I mean, when it first came to me, Kiko didn't know what he wanted to do with me on the project, if I just wanted to produce them or not. And I read it and I was like, who you have in mind for this? Well, we were thinking like a 60 year old white guy, you know, and I was like, well, God bless the 60 year old white men love them all. But you know what? I want to play this role. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to, you know, I want to do my take and, you know, and he was like, Oh, wonderful. That sounds like a really good idea. I was like, yes, it's a brilliant idea. Let's shoot next week. Let's shoot yesterday <laughs> before you change your mind. Let's shoot yesterday. So we got into it and he, we had the best experience possible and we were so in love. I mean, the, the show, the actual short is playing so much for the last three years mm -hmm. in, in all these different festivals and, mm -hmm. and, and it's garnishing awards and whatnot and, and acclimates. And, you know, we're just like, oh, let's shoot a full length feature. So yeah, now I that's know. one of the other things we're in development with that we're, we're trying to make as well. And we're just working on the script right now. So, oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. So we'll hope, hope to see that film in the next two years. So uh, speaking of working with the director, what do you look for as an actor and a director? <laughs> Okay, well, if I'm working with a director, okay, having having directed already mm -hmm. for me, like I know and I appreciate like being able to like talk to my actors um, when they need me. You know, I don't like to be in their face. You know, so so basically, like I trust my crew, I trust my actors. And, you know, I I set up cameras in such a, certain ways that I, it's like. I want I want them to feel like they're almost on stage and they're having a live performance. So like they're creatively flowing and nothing technical is getting in their way. You know what I mean? So like I, I like I almost feel like I'll put zoom lenses on cameras so that you know they, mm -hmm. they we're we're in tight but they don't know we're in tight. You get what I'm saying? So yes. I want them to feel like we're a, I want the audience and the crew to be like flies on a wall watching something like really dangerous happening right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I give them that space, you know, and I like that, you know, I like directors who give us space, you know, because they give, they're give they giving us the respect and the honor of knowing that when they hired me, that I'm going to bring the goods. I'm going to bring my preparation and allow that preparation to be a celebration on set. You know what I mean? And it's not that I'm trying to say, like, you know, actors should take over. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's like, you know, if I, 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 when I'm hiring somebody, I'm looking at mostly, you know, trusting knowing okay this person is brilliant they're great they, they do they do their work they do their homework they're responsible they know they're they're kind people they're loving people they care for the peace they're going to bring something let's play you know so i like obviously like you know before we actually start production maybe a week of rehearsal just to kind of get in there you know get dirty with the director knock out all of these wonderful you know moments and scenes talk about things that you know we'd like to achieve in, in all the scenes. And then, you know, finally, when we get to, to set that we're all on the same page, we're not, you know, wasting time on things that we didn't explore yet. You know, we, we're actually ex we're expanding on the exploration that we had in our preparation and our rehearsal. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, if anything, they'll get, if anything gets stopped or we think for a second about anything, it's only about expanding and moving forward rather than, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 stopping and, 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 and not having had that prep time, you know, together. And yeah. then the other thing is like, you know, sometimes I feel, you know, and this is nothing against certain directors or whatnot, you know, everybody has a different way of going at it, you know, mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. roads to the top of the mountain. And, and as an actor, I understand how to work with all of them. You know, it, it, it's my respect to them and their craft, you know, cause it's not, not everybody's wired the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do kind of tend to like some of the directors who, you know, um, they're brilliant at what they do, you know, and they understand and respect what I do. And, you know, the talking is minimal. You know, it's it's more about the doing, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, you know, if I need another take, let's do another take because, you know, I, I have something special that, that just came up out of the moment that perhaps – Perhaps I didn't hit or didn't jump off the cliff on. And, you know, let me give you one, you know, for shits and giggles. You'll, 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 I'll surprise you. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's an improv, you know, it's something that, it, you know, whether it be on the page or off the page, that it's something, that it's something creative that allows us to, you know, 
to be. And so, you know, I feel like sometimes certain directors like to talk for talk, you mm-hmm. know, uh, mm-hmm. to feel their importance. And it's not, it, you know, it, it, it's sometimes an insecurity thing. Mm-hmm. And I understand it. I understand it, you know, and I, and I, I, I respect them for feeling that way. And, in a way, it's a compliment to me that they want to share that moment with me. They want to talk about something, you know. Um, but but a lot of times it's like, you know, just have faith in your guys and just do, you know, just just lead the way. If I'm off track as an actor for anything, please come in and help me get back on track. Right. But if I'm driving this and I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing and they're getting it and, and I'm, I'm, I'm attached to the story, you know, um, We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. So, some really good directors know how to leave their actors be and just, you know, um, basically just just be like, oh, you want another one? <laughs> you know, oh, no, you're good. Okay, great. Let's move on. You know, it's right, just, right, right, right. It's, it's it's not even you know, it's just knowing when you have it. Some some directors don't know when they have it, you know. And, yeah, and, and, that's and that's that's what Robert Forrester said. He says he's like yeah. I asked him the exact same question. He's like, I like a director who knows when they have it. Right. That's right. a big right. thing. It's a big thing. It's a big thing because you know, um, otherwise it's like it it, it it sometimes it gets kind of sticky and a little muddy. But but you know, I think that at the end of the day, as an actor, without my director's hat on, as an actor. You have to be able to work with everyone and everyone's style, you know, and just basically adapt and, you know, remember that you're invited to a party, you know, and you have to respect everyone at the party and love (laughs) everyone at the party and just, you know, own your work, own your work and, and be ready to be ready to, um, you know, to adapt and to, I already said that, but be ready to, um, complement the project. And to um, collaborate with the project because, you know, no matter what you came up with that is so brilliant for your, you know, that you feel you want to share with the audience and what you want to share for the, with the production, mm-hmm. you know, things, things are going to slightly alter, you know, for one reason or another. Technical things or, you know, uh, story-wise or, you know, whatever. You know, th- things do change. So be ready to change. Be ready to adapt. Be ready to flow. So, you know, you it's just like being a fighter. You know what I mean? Like you can... You can basically train for, you know, 16 months prior to a big fight or three months or two months or one mm-hmm. month mm-hmm. prior to a big fight. And in that preparation, you know, you do you, you, you think of every possible thing that you have to do to fight that opponent. But when you're in the ring, when it's in the fight night, mm-hmm. dude, anything could happen. Anything uh, could happen. Of course. So of you got to be able to just flow and adapt and, you know, you know, go with it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know you're brave enough to go through it you know try to win and if you did win great but if you didn't at least you were brave enough to try you know what i mean yeah, i think that's good advice for life in general just kind of go with the flow yeah. <laughs> anything can happen yeah. at any time exactly and don't freak out when something it does seem to be wrong because what you think might be wrong actually could be a blessing oh i've had that too many times in my career <laughs> 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 Too many times. Cup half full, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, um, hold the uh, mic a little bit off your shirt. It's still oh, rattling. Sorry. You're good, you're good. Okay. Um, so I have a couple more questions. Um, are you good? Are we good on time? Yeah, so far. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Um, any advice you can give uh, a working actor on how to make it as a working actor in the business? Well, here's the number one thing. Anytime you get the opportunity, remember that it, it, you have to appreciate it with every ounce of your body and your soul. And then, you know, prepare yourself to do the best work you possibly can at the time of your life that you're in. Um, because every time you go in and do work for any production, you know, um, uh, it's about being consistent every time. Like always bring your A game. And I know it's exhausting, but you do it because you love it. And there's no other reason why you need to be there. It's simply because you love the story and you love to be on the project and, and be prepared. Because once the audience then feels that love that you brought to the table, like basically like you're serving a dinner, a beautiful dinner every time that you're going, you know, that you put on, on a show, you know. And so like every time you invite the audience in to sit down and give you, you know, your attention for, you know, 45 minutes to two hours, mm-hmm. you know, it's it, it's this amazing dinner that you prepared for them. So, you ha- you know, otherwise... 
if you don't have it that great, then people don't want to come, you know, to dinner anymore. <laughs> you know, so the more that you, so the more that you, you know, they're always bringing something delicious, different, something great, something interesting, you know, and your work is always on, on point. You know, uh, you know, ninety nine percent of the time, you know, because uh, remember, you got to leave one percent for 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 failure because failure is is good thing. It's a humbling thing, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. It's a greatest know, teacher. Uh, but right, you don't but learn by winning all the time. <laughs> exactly, you, but you get, you'll learn by failure as well. But you know, uh, you know, your turkey ain't always going to be as delicious and scrumptious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but 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 at no thanks. Cons- right? If, yeah, if you're right for Thanksgiving, right? Right, right. If, if you're if you're consistent. Right. And giving and preparing the most delicious dinner, doing your best work, then, you know, people will pay attention and people want to keep hiring you. And mm-hmm. that's how you become a working actor in this business. And the other thing that you have to do to also be, you know, a working actor is that you have to have a lot of different things that you do. You have to learn how to dance. You have to learn how to sing. You have to learn, you know, you got to know your shit as an actor. You have to, you know, you, you, you have to pick up an instrument. You have to do a lot of different things. Um, because sometimes a certain role calls for it. Mm-hmm. And, and if you go in on it and you don't know anything about that, you know, uh, it's going to be difficult to cast you, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because then, it, you know, you want, you want to give the producers and the director no reason to say no, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? So you go in for a role and there's a specific skill attached to that role. You want to know something about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> a know? general statement, right? Yeah, exactly. That way, that way, you know, so sharpen your skills when you're not working on different things, whether it be dance class, singing class, horseback riding, guitar, right, right. horseback riding, motorcycle riding. Be safe, guys, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, any kind of contact sport, boxing, martial arts, mm-hmm. you know, be good. Respect your body. Understand you can't hurt yourself either, mm-hmm. you know, but but train, train, you know, on all of these different arts. Um, because, you know, uh, you're going to be called upon to have to p- come up with that skill. And it's very apparent when you don't know what you're doing and uh, because, of, <laughs> and because of television and, and television and independent films move so fast and the preparation is so small, you know, you want to have a head start. If he, so, so there's a big thing about vision questing. I call it vision questing because I say to myself, look, you know what? I, I haven't been called yet to play a, a guitarist, you know, or someone mm-hmm. who's like a, but but like I think of myself as like I'm someday I'm gonna play someone special in history who played guitar. So I play guitar. So I work on it like every day, mm-hmm. even playing little you know nursery rhymes to my son. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, as as long as I, I'm doing it, I I've, you know I'll, you never know when I really have to do it for a job. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm lucky that I do sing. I, I've been singing since I was a child, and I've done it on Broadway, and like we talked about before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if there's a singing role, you know, I sing. So I'm gonna bring that to the table. I say all actors should learn how to do, especially learn how to sing and learn how to use their voice, learn how to dance or do yoga, because it's really important. You don't just act from the head up; you act with your whole body. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're communicating with your whole body. So you got to learn how to use your instrument fully, your full on instrument from head to toe so that, you know, uh, you can apply that to being consistent at work and also being ready for something that might surprise you later on that, you know, you, uh, oh, my God, I've been in dance class all the time. Oh, this is a big dance movie mm-hmm. or oh, it's a big ballroom dance movie. Like what happened with, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was that movie? Uh, the ballroom uh, movie, strictly ballroom, strictly ballroom, or another movie that Robert De Niro did. Uh, you know, oh. the most amazing uh, film of two years ago. Um, uh, oh, 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 um, you know, lining, a silver lining playbook. So it's a silver lining playbook, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the characters didn't have to really know how to dance, but it's good to know something. <laughs> oh, it, it helps. It helps with the part, without exactly. question. Yeah, yeah, now, so. are there are there any pitfalls in the business that you can warn actors about? Pitfalls, you know, I would say the pitfalls are, uh, like in life, don't expect so much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, don't expect, you know, that everybody's going to kiss your ass or, you know, throw flowers, you know, down your, on your feet. You know, uh, you know, you, you appreciate every opportunity you have. Be humble, you know, because if not, you know, um, people, 
people will see that, smell that, and they don't want to work with people that are, don't appreciate to be on a project. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't, you know, they, there's a lot of people I know that shot themselves in the foot because, you know, they think that their uh, poo poo don't stink. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and they get bad reputations, you know? So, so I, you know, I say work hard, be humble. Do your best and um, and and you know try try and bring love to the table and, and nothing else you know um, you know I, I think also you know good training you know get yourself in in a good you know space a good workshop or you know a good class that you can work out for a couple of years that you feel comfortable with and safe mm -hmm. in and you can rock your you know rock your best creativity you know uh, find a way to work out in spaces like that so that even you know as a working actor you're still always growing, you know, in between and you're still you you're riding the bike in between work because sometimes, you know, if if you don't work for maybe four or five months and all of a sudden you got a job and you got to jump back on the bike and you got to, you know, kind of start the pedaling again. Whereas if you're already there and you've been in, you know, another production or working on something for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, to expand your muscles on a character that you never played before, you know, that you know you you're you're ready and 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 as soon as someone calls like bam okay hello let's go and and uh that you know what happens is some some actors get lazy they don't they don't work on their craft they don't they think that they know it all and you know like art art is uh, an evolving thing and so you know you never got it you never th right. and if you feel like you got it then you're dead really creatively we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor And now back to the show. And then the one thing that you said that was, I think it should be made a point of is like, you're just like, oh, yeah, for two years, you have to do this. Like, this is not a short thing. This is a long process to become a really good actor. It takes years of determination, years of work. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and, I still work out and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 30 years in the business. So, yeah, I mean, right. you have to, I say work out because I look at a class like a gym. Right. When I'm when I'm in a class, I'm a structure. I'm 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 working out. You know, that's my workout time. That's my therapy time. You know? So, um, last two questions. Um, the toughest questions by far. What is the what is one of the most underrated films you've ever seen? And what are your top three films of all time? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Three underrated and no one. No, no, just one underrated. Three top. One underrated film and three top. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> I told you it was going to be the toughest. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give me a second on that one. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with the best of all time. Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe the under one underrated one will come to me. But, okay. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, Godfather. Of course. Of course. Well, yeah, <laughs> you of know, course. Godfather one, two, three, five, uh, six, seven. Five, five, six. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. Um, that to me is the. You know, I could, I could just. You know what film is so great when you could like after 30 years of being in the business, anytime it shows up on like, you know, any network or any, you know, any cable channel, mm -hmm. you stop what you're doing and you watch. And if you don't have time, you go you're like, oh, I got to see that again. And you go pick up a DVD and put it in the shit. I've, I, I've, 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 <laughs> I have know? a few of those movies. Yeah. You know, and, I, and, I, and it's now as a director, producer, writer, even more so, it's like. You know, if you have a film like that, you you go back and refer to shots. <laughs> of course, you know, and you go, "Oh my God, look at that camera movement! Oh my God, look at that amazing, you know, uh, 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 you know, panoramic shot that they have, or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, or the way, just the interesting lighting or anything, you know." Um, Cinema Paradiso. Oh, I is love a Cinema Paradiso. Beautiful, beautiful foreign film uh, that, uh, in terms of story and simplicity. Um, and heart and soul. heart soul passion i mean it was you know just so good it just got me right away you know when, when you in terms of story and in terms of like all of that you know inspiration you know it was great great you know it was one of those examples of a fantastic movie that was probably shot for very little and very humbly but with a lot of love and care you know what I mean? Okay. Um, so Godfather, Cinema, Paradiso. And um, gosh, I mean, pff, hello. Whichever I mean, one, what, whichever. Star Wars. There you go. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a kid, you know, it's like you grew up with that and it's so hard to get away from that. Today, 
the kid in me is so excited when I the know. new Star Wars is coming. It's since so, it's since I've never yeah. seen the anticipation. The last yeah. time I've seen anticipation for a movie this much was oh yeah was probably when the the, the prequels came out. Like yeah, exactly. that was the but even now more even now more so because oh my god yeah because the technology is so amazing and and J J Abrams like kicked ass with Star Trek one and two that it's like. You can't wait to see what he's going to do with the Star Wars. You and you know, know that most uh, of the Empire. and most of uh, Star Wars is he shot it old school, practical. Wow! Yeah. He, well, I can't wait. I, I can't, can't wait. wait to see how yeah. he, how he yeah. pulled it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Yancy, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at www.yancyiris.com. dot mm-hmm. com. I check in there all the time, and I, you know you can actually go to my forum and ask questions, and I answer. Um, also on Facebook. Uh, Yancey Arias and Twitter and uh, Instagram and now Periscope. Uh-huh. Uh, so, are, you, are you a Periscoper? Yeah, no, I'm a Periscoper. Oh. <laughs> it, when, oh. when I have a good connection, like I'm on the set of Agents of Shields today, uh-huh. and uh, obviously I can't be on set with the Periscoping, but I can be <laughs> in my so trailer. Much. Not so I much. Can, <laughs> I can be in my trailer talking about it. You know, right. obviously I wouldn't talk about any plot. You know, of course, of course, specific. You know, I have to respect my 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 due diligence and silence. You know, of course, whatever, of course, uh, to the project. But you know, I I I can you know I can just say, hey guys, you know, I'm doing you know this show watch me you know in the new year you know yeah. but but so so yeah uh so you can find me on all those social medias um and uh yeah and and this 2016 uh, at least the first quarter you're gonna see me quite a bit um, i'm on uh agents of shield i'm on bosch on amazon i'm on um Criminal Minds, no, Criminal Minds, Criminal Minds Beyond Borders mm-hmm. is the new uh, Gary Sinise show. Not Gary Sinise, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Please scratch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, wait, is it? it wait, the, in, in, in New York, uh, CSI New York. Okay. What was the what was the one that uh, that was that the one Gary Sinise? that was Gary Sinise yeah CSI oh New York. I'm sorry yeah I'm, I'm I'm thinking somebody else I'm sorry uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm thinking Craig Kinnear for some reason okay I don't know why <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> kind of similar actors but no but yeah, yeah Gary Sinise is amazing anyway so Gary Sinise uh, has a new show called uh, Beyond Borders mm-hmm. it's it's the Criminal Minds um, brand uh, right uh, you know flagship and um, I have a film coming out called uh, Restored Me. And I also have a film coming out called Hands of Stone. So I'm, you can catch me in a lot of n- neat stuff in the, in the first quarter of uh, 2016. And Hands and, of Stone uh, is the one with uh, with, Robert with, 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 Bo- with Bobby. I like to call him Bobby. Bob, Bobby <laughs> De Niro. Hey, Bobby. Hey, yo, Bobby. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I've actually seen the – I saw the trailer. I'm not sure the trailer. The, I saw the poster for sure. I was like, oh. Poster, yeah. And he's like yeah. – he has the, he's the – he's like the um, – the trainer, he's the, right? He's the trainer of, right. of, of Robert De Niro. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, the, of Roberto Duran. Yeah, he's the trainer, and uh, and we have uh, you know, and then in my film that I produced that's coming out, uh, uh, restored me. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's got a really interesting uh, avenue that we're going because we're we're bringing a lot of spirituality to a very urban, edgy, you know, uh, based on a true story type film. Oh, awesome! You know? So, so. You know, it, it kind of goes in the faith-based market, but more. But then it also dances in the you know urban you know suspense thriller world. So it's kind of you know, and and we have some really wonderful actors that you would be amazed that I was able to pull out you know from my little decks of friends you know people that I've loved <laughs> over the years that I've worked with and they've supported me and I've supported them and you know we just try to make it a love fest on set and. You know, bring actors. You know, like much like George Clooney and and, and Steven Soderbergh, he uses a lot of the same people. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's basically what I'm doing. You know, I'm trying to. You know, I, I'm taking a you know page off their playbook and bring friends to the table and we have a great time. You know, so that's we have awesome. a great dinner. You know, so you, so that's a really fun movie that I think a lot of people will appreciate when, once it comes out. Uh, restored me because you you'll see a lot of the people that I've worked with and you'll go oh my god yeah he worked with on that one and he worked with on that project and that that you know yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. so 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 and then you get it and you're like oh I see where Yancey's trying to go with his project he you know it, it is a big you know family affair every time we do this that's so awesome man thank you so much Yancey for taking the time out and uh, sharing the experience your experience with the with the crowd and hopefully mm-hmm. people get something out of a lot of this wonderful information that you laid out for us today, man. Fantastic. Good stuff, man. Hope it helps somebody. <laughs> uh, thanks again for being on the show, brother. You too, bro. You know, sometimes you just meet people in the industry that you just 
just love, man. And 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 Yancey's one of those guys. I absolutely love Yancey and would go to battle with him any day of the week. He is one of those souls that is there he's such such a giving soul and he's such a great uh he's also a very great actor. But um more importantly, he's just an amazing human being and I was blessed to have him on the show and share a little bit of his nuggets of of gold nuggets of information that he has. Anytime you can hear or listen to somebody who's been in the business for a long time give you advice, um, it's in your best interest to listen. And uh, I was listening as much as interviewing on this one as well because I've talked to Yancey a bunch, but I've never had this kind of in de- detailed conversation with Yancey before. So it was a, a big treat for me, and I hope you guys got something out of it as well. Now, guys, don't forget to head over to filmmakingpodcast.com and leave the show an honest review. It really helps us out a lot. So thanks again for all the support, guys. I hope you I hope you guys are getting a lot out of this. I'm loving it and enjoying doing this show and plan to keep doing it for uh, for a long time to come to want to try to help as many filmmakers as humanly possible. So keep that dream alive. Keep that hustle going. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 